Now, let's quickly look at syslog. Syslog is a logging protocol that allows network devices to generate messages for events and status changes on the local device. Local device being router, switch, firewall. These syslog messages are generated and stored locally on a network device. However, you can also choose to send these messages to a centralized syslog server. That is actually a preferred mechanism of storing syslog messages. Syslog uses UDP port 514. Now, at this point, you might be thinking that it's a bit confusing. We just talked about SNMP, which is designed to capture monitoring information, yet we have another protocol that does the same thing. What's the difference? Well, there are two big differences between the two. Syslog's primary use case is to analyze historical data. Okay, so, an event has already occurred, and now you want to look at it. So it's good for forensic analysis, so to speak, after the fact, right? So that's more of a reactive measure. Whereas SNMP provides real-time visibility, so you can actually see what's happening on the device at any given point in time. And you can also push configuration changes. Now, even though SNMP was designed initially with configuration in mind, but in reality, that actually never caught on. So in real world, you would not really see SNMP being used for pushing configuration changes. And if you're aware of the whole SDN realm, software defined networking, which we'll talk a lot more about later in the course, SDN is now responsible for actually pushing configs and things like that to our routers and switches and firewalls. And we'll talk about that later second big difference syslog is a push only mechanism meaning it's a one directional thing meaning a device creates a log and it pushes it to the syslog server whereas snmp the device can decide to actually send an snmp trap to the nms server or the nms system can pull information from the device using polling that we talked about earlier. So you see the differences? These are minute differences, but they add up to a lot when you understand the specific use case for each. Now there's another element of syslog that we need to look at. Syslog has what, what are called severity levels. So the messages that we see on our devices have different severity levels that are specified and that helps us understand the criticality of the message being seen on the device. So for example, the first two values, zero and one, zero stands for emergencies. If the system is unstable, you're gonna get severity value of zero. And severity value one is alerts and it means immediate action is required. Severity level two means it's critical and you need to pay attention to it. Severity level three means some sort of error event has occurred. Severity level four means it's some sort of warning that you need to pay attention to. Severity level five means it's an unusual event, but it's not an error message. Severity level six means it's informational it's a normal operational message. There's no action required on your end as an administrator. And finally, level seven is debugging. And that's application debugging on your device. And it's initiated by the user. And typically it's used for if you're trying to debug, let's say OSPF, or if you're trying to debug IP packets, you would wanna initiate that debugging message locally so your device can start generating debug messages that you can then later analyze and figure out if your device is misbehaving or if your protocol is misbehaving, it may help you understand why that is actually happening. And one important tip that I want you to keep in mind is when you enable logging locally, you can select a severity level and that automatically enables all other levels under that selected level. 
So let me give you an example. Let's say you specify severity level five. That means you're gonna be able to see all the messages zero through five, but you're not gonna be able to see level six or level seven messages. Let's jump on a command line so you can see that in more detail. Now, before we jump on the command line though, I want you to look at a couple of different commands here and understand the impact. So remember we talked about the fact that syslog allows you to generate log messages. The first place where you can see the log messages is the console. So when you are consoled into the device via the console port, you can see the different logs on that device. For that, you type in login console on your router or switch or firewall. Another element you can consider is if you want to allow users that are remotely connecting to this device, not via the console port, but rather via telnet or SSH, you can give them the ability to be able to see the logs. And to do that, you actually need to manually enable that via the logging monitor command in global configuration mode. Also, on the local device where, you're gener where, the, where the console messages are being generated or the syslog messages are being generated, you could type in a command logging buffered. And what that does is starts storing all the logs in your random access memory or RAM. Okay, now be careful with that because it's a RAM. What that means is if your device reboots, all the information goes away. So ideally what you would wanna do in real world is you would want to log your messages to a syslog server. And to do that, you type in a command logging host and then you type in either the URL or the IP address of that host, okay? Other two supplementary commands that are very important that go along with syslog are service sequence numbers and service timestamps. Now the service sequence numbers, as the name suggests, enable sequence numbers. So when an event happens, there is a sequence number right next to it. And similarly, when you enable service timestamps, it enables timestamps to each and every log message that is generated. And if you combine the two, it's very powerful because you can see the exact sequence. You can see the chain of events that happen on that device in a very particular order. And you can also see the timestamp associated with that. Very, very helpful in event correlation and also in any type of forensic analysis. Now let's jump on CLI and take a closer look. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.